Let's get just the people watching. Okay. Okay, I'm Kyle White, and I'm going to be doing why O.J. Simpson was guilty. Okay, so O.J. Simpson was a uh, professional football star who won the Heisman um, in the 90s. And on June 12, 1994, Ron Goldman and uh, O.J.'s ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, were found murdered um, from knife cuts at their house, basically decapitated um, with a single knife blade um, that night. Um, and then that's that. So, sorry, some of these slides are really graphic, but um, they, at the house, there was a ton of blood, and they found, and Officer Mark Furman at the house found um, a bloody glove um, at the crime scene of the murders and a le size 11 shoe prints walking off in the, in the, in the direction of the house um, that night, which are the same size that O.J. Simpson had wore. Okay. Um, so before the murders, um, O.J. Simpson had a prior record of domestic abuse against his wife with over eight calls against him beating his wife um, with police calls. And these are some of the evidence from before then of previous cases of him beating his wife. And history shows that domestic abuse ha does lead to um, murder. So there was that account as the motive for MJ or for OJ's um, murder. So you can go to the next one. So, um, so the police then, after they found the glove at the scene, go to his house to um, inform him as he could be, he could be attacked too. And when they get there to his house, um, he isn't there, he just left for Chicago. So he, um, so this car was parked outside of his house um, really like crookedly, like a really bad parking job, and they found blood on the inside and the outside. So they thought that gave them enough reasonable suspicion or probable cause to go into his house, because you can't just legally enter anyone's house. So they, um, so they, so they didn't get consent, but they thought that was enough probable cause because he could be in danger. So um, you can go to the next one. So once they got into his house, um, they found the matching glove from the glove at the crime scene and um, socks with gloves with blood on them. And um, there was blood on both of them, which contained both the, the murder victims and his blood, uh, their DNA on it. Um, and there was blood on the front porch leading into the house. And when they called OJ that night, he did not ask how his wife died. He just went, oh, okay, she's dead. So I, most people I know, when they ask like their wife is dead, they're like, oh, how did they die? How was she murdered? Did not ask why or how. Um, so I can go to the next one. So, um, yeah, so um, when he was, when OJ was charged with um, murder, he, um, he, they, because of his celebrity status, they gave him the right to not be like pictured doing it. So they gave him the opportunity to turn himself into the police. And doing so, he ran away in a Ford White Bronco with his friend. And uh, the LAPD chased him down the highway in one of the most televised things of all time. They turned off the NBA Finals to showcase this on TV. Um, he was threatening to commit suicide in the car. He had a disguise, money, and a, fa and, a and a fake passport to escape to Mexico, which could not be brought up in trial because it did not pertain to the murder itself. So it was excluded from trial. So they could not ex explain that as to why he was trying to get away. Um, so I'm gonna go next one. So um, when they had to, when they so so then after that they arrested him when they got him and they had to go to, to trial. So um, at the time, there was a race, like, everyone thought it was a big race issue. Uh, pretty much every African American thought he was innocent, and every white American thought he was guilty, um, because they thought it was the police brutality. And um, so most of the jury was African American, as they tried it in the Los Angeles court instead of the um, San Santa Monica, where the crime actually took place in Brentwood, California. So there was a more predominantly black African-American jury, which people think that makes it biased to him because everyone in the country knew about it. No one was, did not know. So, and then um, what made it worse was the detective who found the blood, the gloves at the crime scene was, there is proof of him being racist 
um, saying a lot of very derogatory things towards African Americans, and um, saying how he had the floor pointed evidence. But there were all these other cops there at the crime scene who he did not know um, that uh, who he did not know that also saw him collect this stuff. So he obviously did not point it, as all these other police were not um, seen as racist. So his whole testimony went off the smoke and um, the chain of custody of, um, of evidence uh, completely crashed away. So pretty much the jury, who was uneducated, almost all, none of them had a college education, believed that, um, well, they all believed that he planted it. And um, also in the 90s, the DNA wasn't seen as a thing. No one really knew what it was. They didn't believe it. They thought like, oh, that's not a good enough thing. Um, because um, they had a 600 billion in one chance that it, it was his. So but they were like, oh, we don't know what that, they literally, like their testimonies afterwards, they were like, we don't really know what that meant. We just knew like that wasn't a good enough reason. But now we know that DNA is a good enough reason and it does like point to that person. So, um, yeah, you have one second. Um, so the, uh, Okay, so the the left up here is the uh, defense, which is considered the dream team. So he hired some of the best um, defense lawyers in the uh, country to um, help him, which one of them is he's one of his best friends is Robert Kardashian, who has been accused of hiding um, the knife from the thing and has uh, later admitted that he did think that OJ did do it. He was his best friend. And um, he came out to say that there was a bag that he did throw away which no one knows was in the bag, but it's presumed to be the knife. And the, uh, the right side up there is the, um, the prosecution who was headed by Marsha Clark, who um, has received a lot of sexism from the judge of the case, who did not treat her fairly as the men and gave the defense an unfair advantage as a scene. Um, yeah, um, I'll do the next slide. So, and then a big thing in the case was the gloves, as um, they asked OJ to put on the gloves, and apparently the gloves in this picture does not fit. It looks like it fits to me, but apparently everyone thought that the gloves did not fit. I think the gloves do fit, apparently they don't fit. Apparently the jury thought, oh, the gloves don't fit, so he didn't do it. Which they do have evidence of Nicole buying the gloves, and, um, and him and pictures of him wearing the gloves at other football games announcing, but the jury thinks, oh, the glove didn't fit him. So that was a big debate. And then afterwards, when he got acquitted uh, in four hours, which is a record time for a murder trial, uh, he wrote a book that said, "If I did it." Can you all find the "if" in there? Super small right there. He literally titled his book, "I Did It." So, um, which is basically considered his confession, but because of double jeopardy, he can't be tried again for the murder, so he basically will walk for life with the murders of, yeah, Ron Simpson and, uh, Ron Goldman and Nicole Simpson. 